This is Principal Fraker, and it's time to tee off for summer. Our eighth graders and pre-K students have recently stepped into the limelight to celebrate their hard-earned achievements over the school year. On behalf of Gina Pingelman, our preschool director, and myself, we want to congratulate all of the students and their families who are advancing to the next level. We can't wait to see what you do next. Before my traditional beginning of summer montage, I'd like to remind everyone that our K-8 school and our preschool are welcoming new enrollments. If you know a child who could thrive within our Christ-centered family and enriching academic environment, please contact the school office or visit our website. Now, let's embrace the moment we've all been eagerly awaiting. School is officially out for the summer. Cooper. I want to say something about Alice Cooper. You probably remember Alice Cooper, the story about him biting off some bat's head and all that on stage. And who knows what lore that is. But Alice Cooper, his dad was a pastor. Alice Cooper is a sober man now, and he reads the scriptures daily. He's a Christian, a solid Christian at that. And so it's interesting. When I, when I heard Alice Cooper's song, I thought, oh no. But I, I just wanted to make sure you know, oh, no, Alice Cooper's a good guy now. He's a great guy. And um, and he's, he talks about Jesus at every drop that he can, because he wants all of his rock and roll friends to be saved, too. And uh, how cool is that? So glad you're here with us today. Today's a special day of the church here. One of the high points of the church here, Pentecost. 
the day the church celebrates the visible outpouring of the Holy Spirit on God's people. It's not that the Holy Spirit wasn't in God's people before, but on Pentecost, they became assured of the Spirit's presence. And so we carry on with this tradition as God's Pentecostal people, and we'll hear more about that in today's message. But welcome, we're glad you're here. Let's rise and let's join our worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. We pray silently to the Lord. <coughs> o Spirit of God, we confess that we have dishonored your holy word through our lives of disobedience. By what we do and what we fail to do, we have not allowed your message of truth to rule in us. Forgive us, faithful God. By your grace, draw us to the cross of Jesus. Through faith in his promises, enable us to receive the restoring mercy that you alone can give. Amen. In Christ Jesus, you and I receive the fullness of all whom who we are called to be through the Spirit who has been given to us. United with Christ for our baptism, the Spirit who claims us as the Father's own now delivers to us the, the message of his mercy. 
As a called and ordained servant of Christ, commissioned by his spirit, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alleluia. O Lord, how manifold are your works, in wisdom have you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. These all look to you to give them their food in due season. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful, and kindle in them the fire of your love. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, on this day, you once taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending them the light of your Holy Spirit. Grant to us the same Spirit so that we may joyfully receive the message of Christ who has come for us all. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. The Old Testament reading comes from the 11th chapter of Numbers, verses 24 through 30. Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord, and he gathered 70 men of the elders of the people and placed them around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied, but they did not continue doing it. Now two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other Medad, and the Spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but they had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, the son of Nun, the assistant of Moses from his youth, said, 
My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, that the Lord would put his spirit on them. And Moses and the elders of Israel returned to the camp. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. O my God, in you I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Let not my enemies exalt over me. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners in the way. He leads the humble in his right, the humble his way. All the paths of the Lord are steadfast love and faithfulness for those who keep his covenant and his testimonies. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. The New Testament reading comes from the second chapter of Acts, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place, and suddenly there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting, and divided tongues as a fire appeared to them and rested on each one of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now there are dwelling in Jerusalem Jews, devout men from every nation under heaven, and at this sound, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, because each one was hearing them speak in his own language. And they were amazed and astonished, saying, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us in his own native language? Parthians and Medes and Elamites and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabians. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. And all were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others mocking said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, lifted up his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and give ear to my words. For these people are not drunk, as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what was uttered through the prophet Joel. And in the last days it shall be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even on my male servants and female servants, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the day of the Lord comes, the great and magnificent day. And it shall come to pass that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Let us stand. Alleluia. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the seventh chapter. Lord, Glory to you, O Lord. On the last day of the feast, the great day, Jesus stood up and cried out, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. Now this he said about the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were about to receive, for as yet the Spirit had not been given because Jesus had not yet been glorified. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated as we sing.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, our risen, our ascended Savior, and now the Savior who sends the Holy Spirit, his blessings to you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you and we praise you for Jesus. You have given us everything in him. And too often we go flirting after other desires and, and wants, and then we find ourselves back at the cross and find ourselves fully fulfilled in everything that we ever needed. Lord, forgive us for our, our ways and help us to have better ways. Thank you for bringing us here. Thank you for your good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins that you took care of 2,000 years ago. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done for us and for our salvation. May we always be assured of your grace in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Stream-laden dreams. That was my title Wednesday. I don't know. It's, it's, it didn't move. On the last and greatest day of the festival, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as scripture has said, rivers of living water will flow within them. Livers. By this he meant the spirit whom those who believed in him were later received. Up to that time, the spirit had not been given since Jesus had not been glorified. Now let me say something about that not had been given. The Bible's clear in the book of Romans that no one can believe that Jesus is Lord unless by the power of the Holy Spirit. The only way that one can believe in God is through the power of the Holy Spirit. The people in the Old Testament, they had the Holy Spirit. They just didn't know what that was. It wasn't spelled out. They were, they were kind of in that stage where they could only understand God as Father and as promiser of something future. And, for, and, and the Spirit was not something that was not as emphasized but, he, but they knew the Spirit was there. And so I, when people say, oh, well, the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost, I'm saying, well, the Holy Spirit was here because God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and God is always present. But the Holy Spirit was not made manifest until such a time as that, not, not for everybody. For various judges along the way, they got the Holy Spirit, like Deborah or Samson or, or Gideon or you know the, those 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 Ehud. They, they would they would get they would get the Spirit, and then it would it would it would flow away from them. The visible sign of it would be away. But wherever there's belief, there has to be Spirit. Otherwise, God works counter to Himself. It's, for instance, in the Old Testament, the people were never saved by the good works they did or the Ten Commandments. The people in the, ten, in the Old Testament were saved in the belief and the promise that God was going to take care of the problems. And the people in the New Testament, we believe in the promise that has come to take care of the problems. But everything is tied together in the promise. And so God doesn't work one way in the Old Testament and then work another way in the New Testament. And I just say this because sometimes people in the church, they say some strange things and there are people who are willing to listen to us every now and then. We've got to be careful what we say and what we don't say. Um, so anyway, the Spirit comes. So what is this about? This is about Jesus setting his disciples up for the next stage, letting them know what's going to happen, and, and dropping little seeds along the way so that when all the stress of his departure comes, they'll start to pull at these threads, and they'll start to pull together this beautiful this, this beautiful um, quilt, so to speak, of how God's going to operate in this new way. And Jesus was letting us know all along. Um, in John 4, he has, a, he has, a, he has a, a discussion with a Samaritan woman, a woman outside of the covenantal people, so to speak, or so especially his disciples at the time thought, but Jesus was alerting her of something bigger that's for everybody, and there's enough for everybody, not just Jews, but for Gentiles as well. And it was because of her that when Jesus went to Samaritan villages, many people in Samaritan villages believed in Jesus because she was gushing over with that living water where she went, and she couldn't help but talk about it. So how does this living water come? When you think of living water, it comes through, there, there's a reason that we hear about the spear in Jesus' side, not just to affirm that he was dead and confirm that, but there's also a lot of prophecy involved with water. From, from the Old Testament, you know, for us as Lutherans, we pull the thread of law gospel throughout the whole scriptures. 
You know, our Roman Catholic brothers and sisters, they have to have the love for Christ as the, as the thread they use through the scriptures. How do we show love for God? Our Baptist brothers and sisters, they look at the sovereignty of God. And so when they look at the scriptures, they pull that thread of God's sovereignty. And, and they all have their merits. If you go too far with the sovereignty, God being in control, unfortunately, he gets in control of sin, Satan, and everything, and then it makes God kind of look kind of strange. If you get to the love for Christ with, the, with our Roman Catholic brothers too, too deep, you start to think it's about what you do and, and what, what, what you bring to the table and not what God does. And so for us, it's been law gospel, but you could easily take water. And you could tie water all the way from the chapter one all the way to Revelation chapter 21. And you can tie in water and you can see how it fits together. Baptism and all of that stuff. And so water's a powerful image. Powerful image. A daily image. You know, it's, it's, it, I, I tell everyone, it's, it's no accident that God chose baptism as a way to remind us we're his children because every day we've got to contend with this thing called water. Too much of it, we die. Too little of it, we die. It's one of those great mysteries Powerful force. Nothing, nothing powerful like water. Look what water does to rocks. Over time, it destroys them. With salt mixed in just destroys them. Water's powerful. You can't, you can't push water together and, and, and expect things to hold together for too long. So why am I saying this? Because you as Christians have encountered living water, either in yourself or in other people. And here's how it comes out. The living water, God pours into you. And as it pours into you and you start to see and re recover who Christ is and you start to see how beautiful he is, you, you start to gush over into other things that you're not even aware of. You're not even aware of. And so you, you, you gush into these things like you, you, you talk about, you know, some of you take this for granted, but I hope you never do. We just had confirmation. And one of the cool things about confirmation is I get to sit with the parents and the kid during the interview. And I t turn to the parents in front of the kid, and I say, you have done a good job. You have, you have done what parents are supposed to do. You have alerted your kid to who God is, and you have maintained this relationship, and you yourself have revealed what it means to you. And so thank you for being here, because this is important. This is important. Sharing the faith to the family members. <laughs> wow. I was with Harold Wilkie um, in the hospital, just the two of us, and had brought him communion, and we had a wonderful visit, and I just, I, I, I praised him because of his family, and, and how the, the gospel has reached out into that family, and I, I run into Wilkie's here, and then I go to Concordia, where my daughter goes to school, and I run to Wilkie's over there, and I, I start to see a trend, but I, but I appreciate, and I just told Harold, what a gift God has given you that you gave your family. You know, out of all the things you can give your family, this is the greatest gift. That's just the outpouring of the Holy Spirit working through your life, okay? Another time, comforting mourners. We as God's people, we got a, we've got a cool niche in this thing because we've got this hope to eternal life that's assured for us through the death and resurrection of Jesus. It's a no-brainer. The, the, the room for doubt is very little, to be honest with you, when you start looking and really unraveling the resurrection proofs and circumstantial proofs and the changed lives of the disciples and the church's growth and all the things that they were willing to endure for the sake of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It's hard to just dismiss that message and push it aside and say, it didn't happen. Those silly people in the first century, what did they know? Because 2,000 years later, we're still... We're still seeing the, 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 wonderful, uh, the, the wonderful effects of that resurrection. Even now, when, when we go to funerals and we hear the pastor or we ourselves can share with our loved one that, you know, thank God for heaven. Thank God for heaven. Otherwise, we'd be the most miserable of people right now, wouldn't we? And I've shared that at funerals, and I know you have too. And it's because of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Another one, lived openly before others. Don't take this for granted. You have had people in your lives who have openly demonstrated Jesus, who when they were even tapped a little bit to find out why they were the way they are, they were more than happy to turn around and share with you because Jesus loves me so much and I can't but share his love with other people. And maybe they don't say it in such flowery language, but they certainly show it in flowery ways. Maybe you've been part of that, where you did things and at the end of the day you said, how? That was cool that I did that, but I really didn't expect to do that. Outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Other one, praying with others. 
Don't take that for granted. That's a gift God has given you. In your daily discussions with him, he builds up a relationship with you which you can carry in front of and with others around you. I, I, I'm always amazed when, when I get with people and they gotta wait for me to pray with them. You know, like, oh, I, the pastor's gotta pray or else it's not a real prayer. We can't eat food unless the pastor prays. <laughs> I, wanted to, I wanted to go in my car one day and just take a little trip for about an hour and come back and see if you all are still waiting for me to eat. <laughs> I've thought about it, I've thought about it, but then I wanna eat too, so I'm part of the problem. Um, but, but your prayers are just as, here's a wonderful word for the day, just as efficacious as any prayer that I give. But my prayers sound a little flowery, you know why? Because I speak about this wonderful story all the time. And if you speak about something over and over again, it becomes easier and easier to speak about it over and over again. And I can't help but do it, but I don't want to take that away from you. My first prayers when I was a 28-year-old pastor were, were fumbling, mumbling nonsense a lot of times and a lot of pithy stuff because my relationship was being forged. And I didn't realize how forged it would be until I became a pastor. But the outpouring of the Holy Spirit allows you to pray with others. Allows you to be the one who, when the families gather together, say, hey, why don't you, Merle, why don't you pray? Or, or, or Harriet, why don't you pray and, and, and lead the... And I, I, I'm in a blessed in a family in Louisiana where for, for years I have never been asked to pray because there was always a matriarch there who would do the prayers. And I love it. And she and I, I love her to pieces. But I, I don't mind praying. It's just I love to see when God's people do it because it's that outpouring of the Holy Spirit visible for me. Visible for me. The next one is verbally spoken of him. Can't say enough about this. You know, someone talks, says something, and you've had it. it. It might be someone in your own family, and you've heard about, you've heard this before, and finally, you just, you just got to give a witness of some sort, and you don't know what you're saying. And at the end of it, you, you turn around and you say, "Man, I should write that down. That was pretty good. What came out of my mouth?" And you start to realize that's a bubbling over the Holy Spirit. And so these things are happening in your life and the lives of those around you. But sometimes other things get in the way. And the bubbling isn't so much is not there, it just is suppressed or overseen by an overconcern for money. Right now, that seems to be a big deal, and I can understand why. Things have gotten really expensive real quick. And a lot of people haven't been able to figure a handle on it. I can't tell you how many cars I see now where people are at lights and they've run out of gas and they're putting gas tanks in because people are running on fumes as they try to get to and fro. It, it doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, money can still be this huge, this huge thing in your life. It, it's, you think when you're poor, you think, oh, when I have lots of money, things will get better. And then you turn on some MSNBC show that at the end of the night and you realize, oh, when you come into a lot of money, sometimes things don't get better. The same problems you had are still there. Now there's even more avenues to escape them, more avenues to find avenues. And so money, reputation, easy thing to get held up in. You know, people spend a lot of time and energy trying to get a, a blue check mark or, or, you know, on Twitter or, or, or get, you know, some, a lot of, lot of likes or good Yelp re reactions, um, things such as that. I was reading, for this church, I was reading some Yelp stuff that came up and I read one and it was, a, it was a negative one, and it was there, and I remembered the event. I remembered the event, and I said, oh, that's interesting. That's obviously that person's perspective on it. But the event was where somebody wasn't happy with something, they thought their kid was getting hit, and there was no evidence their kid was really getting hit, and then the person kind of berated the teacher, and I happened to be walking by, and so I walked in and did something very chivalrous, which was really outside of my character, and I stood up to the person and I said, that's not who this person is. And that person stood up and looked like they were gonna fight me. And, and this was right out here. And I, and I just, uh, I said, you, no, this is, and I, I was on my way to chapel. <laughs> I was on my way from my office to chapel. And I remember this situation. Nothing, nothing came of it. The person stopped coming. They brought supper to their kids. But when I was reading that, I just thought, ah, negative comments. That's not bubbling of the Holy Spirit. That's bad stuff. That's the kind of stuff that carries. And sometimes we worry about our reputation. And 
as a church, we can worry about that too. You can worry about all your Yelp things and everything that people write about you and all that stuff. <coughs> and we got a culture which seems to be riding on that. Whatever people tweet or whatever people do, they, they seem to want to roll to it. Reputation seems to be very important. And when it is, when it's, when it's marred, it, it's, people have got lawyers who will try to go after it. It's, it's a, wow, it's, a, it's an ongoing business industry, trying to maintain your reputation. I don't know about you, but I came here, and like you, I said I was a sinner. Let's go with that. I'll start there. I'm happy with that. Okay, but I'm also forgiven. Let's not stop there. Possessions, easy, so easy. Forbidden desires, oh, the internet, you know. Used to be that you used to have to go to the seedy part of town to get in the seedy parts of life. Now the seedy part of town is in your life. You have to worry about your kids, what they're watching on their phone. You have to worry about if they've got ghost sites that they go to where they speak to their friends, where they don't think the parents can talk, find out. Yeah, these things happen. These things also take over, and before you know it, we're dried up quickly. So what do we do? Well, we do what we just did when we came to worship today. You know, we do it every Sunday, and sometimes we take it for granted, much like a lot of this Pentecostal stuff. But we said this, we confess that we have dishonored your holy word through our lives of disobedience by what we do and what we fail to do. We have not allowed your message of truth to rule in us. Forgive us, faithful God, by your grace. Draw us to the cross of Jesus. Through faith in his promises, enable us to receive the restoring mercy that you alone can give. <coughs> and then Pastor Leland said, as a called, ordained servant of Christ, commissioned by his Holy Spirit, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And that ends how we get back to being the Pentecostal people. See, it's not just for the people of the world that this, this message comes, it's for us. It's for us who are, one day we're bubbling over with things of God and the next day we're dried up with the things of this world. And so this message is for us to know that God's water of living water is for us. And every day we can go to it and receive what he gives. Every day we can look at the Jesus gem and we can see him from a new angle through devotions and portals of prayer and things like that. And we can start to get flesh out this Jesus a little more before our eyes and before our hearts. And we can start to see more bubbling over and less dry parched mouths, dry parched hearts. There's enough for everyone. We're told when we get to heaven, there's a river running through there as well. That should be no surprise, for Jesus is there. Jesus, nothing could hold him down. Do you realize that? The things of this world could not trap him. They could not ensnare him. They could not stop him. And he lives in you and me. And he promises that the things of this world, yes, they are beyond help in a lot of ways. They are, they are winding down. This world, we're told, is not going to last forever. But be of good cheer, for I have given you the helper to keep you in my grace, to keep you understanding my story, and to keep you believing in my son. I have given you this. So as I flow into you, continue to flow into others. My friends in Jesus Christ, I say the same thing to you. I don't know where all your spiritual lives are, but I do know that your spiritual lives, like my spiritual life, go through highs and lows. When you're at your lowest, I want you to hear again, Jesus offers you living water. When you turn on your tap to get a drink, when you get ice cubes out of the fridge that day, when you take a shower, when you even flush the toilet, you're reminded with that water that God has taken away your sins and you are his child forever. And then you come to church and you hear through the word again this wonderful news of how special Jesus is and how special he sees you to be. And then you receive him in, his, in the wine and the bread, reassured again that, that, that he loves us and he doesn't push us away, even though a lot of our days we're pushing him away or at least we're just ignoring him altogether. And he says, I'm still here for you and I still flow for you.
As Christians, too often we live in a lot of guilt. We live in a lot of regrets. We live in a lot of shame. And because we live in that kind of shame, guilt, and, and regret kind of world, we walk around with dried message. Sometimes we're the hardest people to forgive ourselves. For we know the intricacies of our sins. Other people, they just saw the effect, or maybe they didn't, but we know. God has forgiven you. His water washes over that too. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us rise. And let us join together in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty. Light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended to heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the mission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and life of the world to come, amen. Please be seated. We now worship the Lord with our tithes and our offerings. If you have any prayer requests, please use one of the forms you can find in the back of the church. Include them in the offerings as they are gathered. Thank you. It is prayer time at Epiphany. And this is Memorial Day weekend. And so what I'd like to do right now is just to have any who have had a loved one who has died, who served in our country, would you please stand if, we, if you have any of those? Please. God bless you. Thank you. And I want to just say a prayer for you all right now. Lord, we just want to thank and praise you for all the, the veterans that have gone on before us, for their courage, for their devotion, and for their sacrifice. Lord, we thank you. We praise that you, that you would just bless us all now, continue to bless our nation with liberty and justice for all. 
Continue to bless us, Lord, that we have opportunity to share Jesus with others. Help us, Lord. Bless us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. And be with us in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand with me as we go to the Lord in prayer. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Confident in Christ our Savior and in the promised intercession of the Holy Spirit, let us lift up our hearts and voices in prayer to our Father above. Faithful Lord, your mercies are new every morning. Even when we stray from your presence from di through disobedience to your commands, you reconcile and restore us through the spirit of the message, who is Christ himself, our hope of glory. Give us the fullness of your spirit. Redeeming Savior, you prepare a place for us in your Father's kingdom and promise to all who trust in you the inheritance of life forever in your presence. Help us with our hearts to believe and with our mouths to confess your saving name. Give us the fullness of your spirit. Sanctifying spirit, you fulfill the lives of all who trust in Jesus. Grant restoration and peace to those who are broken in heart and mind, body and soul. Grant that each one of us find refreshment in your presence. Open our eyes to the needs of our neighbors, for in them we see you, and in serving them we give you our service. Give us the fullness of your spirit. So Sovereign King, you are the Lord of all things in heaven and on earth. Watch over the community of the state and the nation in which we live, guiding all public servants to act justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you as their God. Enable us to dwell in security and peace, giving witness to the message of Christ with boldness and gentleness, so that those who have yet to receive you as, your, as their Savior may be brought to saving faith. Give us the fullness of your spirit. Great physician, you give healing to those who cry to you for mercy. Today we lift up before you all we have named and all who are listed, and all we give to you now from our hearts. Whatever issues we may be facing, help us to look to you and remember that in Christ alone we receive the fullness of all of all we have been called to be in you. Give us the fullness of your spirit. Receive the fullness of your spirit in offering these prayers to you, O gracious Lord. We trust that you hear and answer us according to your gracious and good will. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places Give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who sends to us your Holy Spirit, that with our hearts we believe in you, and with our mouths we confess your saving name. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and saying, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take ye, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also after supper he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us stand. Now may this, the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you steadfast in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in joy and peace. All your sins are forgiven. Amen. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this dietary gift. We implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen.